it's it, it just they can talk to drab people at their at their work, right? They work at a cubicle. They can talk to drab people next to them all day long. They want to see somebody that says the shit that they want to say or that they would say if they had the chance. And let's think about a babyface promo. In a babyface promo, the babyface should illustrate why he's mad at the guy, what he's going to do to the guy to get even for what the guy did, and he's also going to say the things that the fans wish they could say if they had the opportunity. They'd like to say, Jim Cornette, you're a no-good faggot. They'd like to say, Ric Flair, you're a stuck-up prick. They'd like, to, you know, they'd like to say those things, but they can't because they don't have a microphone. They're not on TV. So when a guy that they're watching says that, yeah, yeah, I'm on your side. That's a babyface promo. What do he do to you? What are you going to do about it? And what do you think of him? And in the process, say shit that they'd like to say if they had the chance. When I used to talk about Paul E., I would say everything about Paul E. That, that the people could plainly see was true. He was a disreputable human being. And I would say those things. They wanted to be able to say that themselves, so they agreed with me. And I was a big prick at the time myself. Why would anybody like Jim Cornette? Because the other guy was a bigger asshole, and Jim Cornette was knocking him, and it was funny. With a heel promo, lie. Lie, exaggerate. Put yourself over, be egotistical, and talk about how you're the greatest things in sliced bread and everybody else is second, second place. Talk about how you're going to destroy the only hope that the people have left. You know, you're going to take Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson the Rock and Roll Express, and you're going to show them for the second-rate team that they are. You're going to destroy all the people's hopes. Everybody out there chanting rock and roll, rock and roll. It's all going to come to a screeching halt. The music will die on February 3rd at the Omni, whatever the fuck. Lie, exaggerate, be egotistical, piss people off. That's a heel. Babyface, sell the, sell the match and say what the people wish they could say if they had the chance. Does a manager's promo just fall into those two categories or is there anything different than a manager's Yeah, and I mean, also, you got to, you know, the thing is, you've also you've got to get your team over, your guy over that you're managing. Um, you know, I mean, just little things. You don't have to go hog wild with it, but one time Stan Lane wasn't at, at TBS. So I said, you may notice Stan's not here. Stan, being the charitable guy that he is, uh, noticed that there was a home for unwed mothers that was not doing well. So Stan Lane, on his own time, on his own money, is going out and supplying that home with more unwed mothers. What the fuck is this guy saying, right? But at the same time, Stan's not even there, and I'm helping get Stan over. Just a little background shit. Just be colorful. You know, uh, it, but, but the most important thing is, that was natural for me then. <laughs> Plus, I was younger, and I had more wind. I could talk faster, you know. But be natural for yourself. You know, if, if a guy's six foot three and has a mohawk haircut and tattoos all over his body and rides a Harley, the last thing he wants to do is adopt a gay gimmick. Because he can't feel that. He can't make that believable. He can't bring that out. There's no reason for that. Be natural. Bring it from within yourself. Turn the volume up. And get it across. How about a go-home promo? Like it's the week before the big pay-per-view or the big match. Is there any principles or any basics that need to go on that? Or does that cover... Mention that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if it's this Friday night, this Friday night, it's what we've all been waiting for. This Friday night, you're going down. This Friday night, as many times as you can say this Friday night, because that gets to people's mind. My God, it's this Friday night. It's, it's, it's easy. But everybody, you know, they want to concoct some long song and dance, who shot John bullshit promo about, wow, I've thought of this story I can tell. Well, by the time you finish telling a fucking story... People have tuned you out because they don't give a shit. They want to they see something that smacks them in the face. Why do I want to see this? Why do, I, why do I care that these guys are fighting? Why do I want to see this? And you got a very short time to tell me. So don't all go around your elbow to get to your wrist. Hit the meat of the matter. It's, it, it, it's, it's timing and it's just experience. And, and you know, a, 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 lot of, a lot of people are not comfortable talking on camera. A lot of people feel like they've got to memorize what they're going to say, and then they come off with that, that blank look because you can tell they're, they're shifting around trying to figure out what was it I was going to say. Yeah, just rattle the shit off. If, if you're good at shows and if you're not good, practice, get better, or do something else. Are there any other glaring mistakes that you see people making in promos? 
almost every time I watch a promo, but it would take <laughs> it would take three days to list those. <laughs> um, it, really, it's it's like art. It's subjective. It's it's not a math test. You can't get a ninety seven. Or it's not a geography test. If you know where Brazil is, you passed. It's art. You know, Picasso, they sell for $5 million. Most people I know don't have three years. But some people like Picasso. It's subjective. And what you got to do is you got to appeal to the most people, the widest number of people, the widest audience, as you possibly can to get people to come see you. Some are going to like you. Some are going to hate you. Some just going to see what, well, fuck, what the fuck's going to happen. But it's art. It's subjective. A lot of people, if you ask everybody who watched this tape, everybody in this room, there's thousands, by the way, a huge studio audience right behind us. <laughs> Everybody's going to have a different favorite. A lot of people are going to like Ric Flair. A lot of people are going to like Steve Austin. A lot of people are going to like Mick Foley. And then, you know, it's going to get down and finally, you know, lost legends like Chris Cole to be one guy in the back with a wart on his nose. Yeah, I like Chris Cole, you know. But goddamn, Chris Colt impressed that one fucking guy that he was the greatest fucking talent in the history of the business. So it's 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 not right or wrong. It's just what works. If they if they buy tickets, it worked. Okay. Um, one thing I always heard about promos is that you should be careful about degrading your opponent, such as saying, uh, you know, he's he, he's you're not that good or something like that. Just because if you lose <coughs> to him, then that makes you look bad. Is that well? Sort of once again. As a manager, I could always degrade my opponents because the thing is, I'm a weaselly little shyster, con man, you know, rich mama's boy, whatever the, the period of time I was in. And of course, I would always stand there and infuriate people by saying that my guys were better than anybody out there. Uh, I could get away with that. If, if, you're, if you're an Arn Anderson, you want to put your opponent over. You want to say, he's good, he's fast, he's quick, he's agile, he's tough, he's smart. Most people he could beat, but not me, because I'm better, because I'm all those things and more, that type of thing. Um, what you don't want to do is if, you're, if your baby face has a really glaring, obvious weakness, like he's 66 years old or has one leg or, you know, is, is in the middle of, of, you know, falling apart, you don't want to say that because that's true and people go, yeah, that's right, he don't stand a fucking chance. But, you know, I could talk about you know, all of the, the supposed defects the baby faces had that they really didn't have. You know, I could say, ah, oh, these guys are punks. Nobody cares about it. Whatever. As long as you don't hit too close to the nerve. Then because you're then, yourself a liar. Yeah, I'm, I'm a liar. I'm a heel. That's what I'm supposed to do. You know, I, I can lie all day long, and it just makes people madder at me and more anxious to see people beat me up. But if your baby face is really over the hill or really fat and out of shape or really just fucking putrid... You don't want to come out and say that because people will go, yeah, you know what, you're right. We better miss this one. You know, so knock the guys, but at the same time, don't knock them too close to the bone where it really, where the people can see, yeah, you're right. Fuck, we better not even worry about that one. Before we move on from promos, anything else you want to add about promos? Um, it, it's, it's an art form all in itself, and I guess, guys, everybody needs to be relaxed more. Everybody needs to, to just think, what would I say if this whole situation, this whole world that we live in, our little wrestling world, if it was real? If the things that we had done really happened to me, really happened to him, really happened to him, what would I say? What would I do? How would I react? What frame of mind would I be in? Would I be pissed? Would I be happy? Would I be sad? Would I be jumping up and down off the walls? Or would I be scared to freaking death? And do that. Because people can tell genuine, honest emotions, and sincerity is the key. And once you can fake that, you got it made. Okay. All right, moving on to working as a heel. <laughs> what characteristics, uh, basic characteristics, make up a good heel character? Once again, the only rule of thumb is there is no rule of thumb, because uh, there's been heels uh, that stretch the gamut uh, in this business. There's the cool heels. Ric Flair was one of the original cool heels. There, there's the, the, the just pissy-ass little Weasley heel. I mean, you know, uh, Bobby Heenan was a classic example of the weasel. <laughs> there, there's all kinds of heels, but what you need to do at the bottom of the whole thing is, what characteristics in a human being would be dislikable? 
what characteristics in a human being would make the most amount of the general public think that you're just a prick and they don't like you. You're annoying, you're obnoxious, you're dishonest, you're arrogant, you're egotistical, you're a cheat, a liar, a con man, a coward, a fraud. What, what is not likable? Be that. Be that. Stab your mother in the back and have her arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Do anything you can do to be disreputable. That's a heel. But make it fit who you are. Arn Anderson, once again, to use a, uh, it could, could be probably nobody with more differences in their professional careers than Jim Cornette and Arn Anderson. We were both heels for a majority of the time. I was the rich mama's boy, you know, possibly ambiguously gay, uh, you know, weasel, coward, scared to death. Arn Anderson was a tough, kick-ass, no-nonsense wrestler that would tell people he was better and show them. But when it came time to back up from Dusty Rhodes or to back up from the top baby face, he would do that. And at the same time, he would cheat in the match to win. He would tell the people, he'd make no bones about it, I'm going to cheat because that's what I do. I don't care what you people think of me. I don't care whether you like me or not because I don't take your cheers and your applause to the bank. I take my check to the bank, and if I win, I make more money. Therefore, guess who loses you? Because I don't give a fuck what you think as long as I'm happy. That's another kind of heel. And there's all kinds of heels in between. So it, it's, it, it's all about psychology. Think of what makes a person dislikable and find out what qualities you have that would closely resemble those, and everybody's got them. Mother Teresa may be the only complete baby face in the whole fucking world and and amplify that and the same thing goes for a baby face used to baby faces were dimple faced and smiley and nice and they kissed babies and they shook hands and they would never think of using a closed fist well once again going back to Bobby Heenan's statement about the news fuck now those are the heels because people are so cynical and jaded and, and just overly overwhelmed with what's going on in the world that they want a Steve Austin who drinks beer and cusses and kicks ass and don't mind telling you he's going to do it and don't give a fuck what people thinks. But at the same time...